एवरीवन माय नेम इज़ पीयूष सचदेवा एंड वेलकम टू अनदर वीडियो इन द सीरीज नमस्ते गूगल क्लाउड वेयर आई विल बी पब्लिशिंग जीसीपी वीडियोस एवरी वीक इन दिस वीडियो आई विल एक्सप्लेन डिफरेंट जीसीपी एंटिटीज सच एज ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस फोल्डर्स सब फोल्डर्स प्रोजेक्ट्स एंड हाउ दे फिट टुगेदर इन रिसोर्स हायर आर प्लीज वॉच द कम्प्लीट वीडियो एज वी विल बी डूइंग सम नॉलेज चेक्स एट द एंड विद सम सैम्पल एग्जाम क्वेश्चन इफ यू आर प्लानिंग फॉर associate cloud engineer certification if you are new to my channel please hit the subscribe button below and the bell icon to get notified about all my upcoming videos without further ado let's get into it let's have a look at the resource hierarchy in gcp suppose you are working for an xyz bank which will be considered a gcp organization and is the root node of the hierarchy can be further subdivided into multiple sub organizations or line of businesses such as foreign exchange capital markets banking and so on this categorization in gcp can be done using folders to provide an additional layer of isolation between sub organizations then these folders can be further subdivided into different teams such as equity derivatives and so on this categorization in gcp can be done using subfolders there could be many folders and subfolders in the resource hierarchy and these folders can be further subdivided into environments such as testing staging production and so on this is achieved using what we call projects a project organizes all your gcp resources together For example you keep resources of your test environment inside project A and production environment in project B to separately manage those resources you cannot create a gcp resource without a project you can apply an iam role at the organization level which is basically a set of permissions it can also be applied at folder level subfolder level project level or in some cases at the resource level however it is applied in a top down approach which means the role applied at the parent node will be inherited by default by all the child nodes you cannot delete the role or permission at the child level if it was inherited from the parent node but you can always override it at the child level now let's head over to cloud console and see how we can create our first gcp project all right so i have logged into my cloud console and this is the dashboard that we have already seen in the previous videos so to create a new project you could just click over here and it will show you different projects that are already present so name of these two projects are same because project name is non unique and it can be changed even after the project is created it is just a human readable name of the project and it is not referenced by any of the gcp apis however this id it was auto generated for you and this cannot be changed to switch between different projects you could just click over here and the project will be changed right to create a new project you click over here new project you give this project a human readable name call it as project 101 and over here you provide the parent resource of this project such as a folder or an organization currently i don't have any organization created for me and i just cannot create organization for myself if i click on browse it will just show you this which says no organization there are some prerequisites for creating an organization if you go to this url over here it will show you that you should be either a cloud workspace user or a cloud identity user in order to use the organization resource and it will be automatically created for you once you sign up for either of those services right so i'm not doing either of those at the moment that is why it is no organization for me and one more thing if you see over here it will show you you have 23 projects remaining in your quota that means there is a soft limit on the number of projects that you could create i have already created two projects and it is showing me that you have 23 projects remaining in your quota that means the soft limit is 25 by default but you could always request an increase or delete projects by clicking over here to manage quotas 
and it will open a case with GCP support and they will increase your limits if all right. So for now, I'll just uh, verify the details and hit create over here. And in the notification bar, it will show you that it is now creating the project. And once it is created, it will show you as success. You could just select the project from here. Right. And then it will be switched for you or you could just do the traditional way. Click over here and just select the project. That is how you would switch to a project. Now let us have a look at how you would shut down the project. So shut down the project if you want to delete all the resources within a project and basically stop incurring charges on those resources then you would simply go ahead and delete or shut down the project. Right. So you go over here on the right side where it says setting and utilities on the three dots and go to project settings. Once you do that, it will ask you to verify these details like this was the project name, project ID, which was generated for you. This is a unique number and the project number was also auto generated for you. You could click over here, shut down. And it says to shut down project test project 101 type the project ID this. So I'll just copy the project ID from here. I paste it over here. There is a space at the beginning. So I'll just remove it. And uh, it's also showing you that the uh, owner of the project will be notified and can stop the deletion within 30 days. So that means you will still have 30 days if you change your mind or if you want to reinstate the access project will be scheduled to be deleted after 30 days. However, resources may be deleted much earlier. So even if you delete the project now, it will still take 30 days to completely delete it. After 30 days, it cannot be recovered, but before that it can be done. So I'll just click over here, shut down. And it is saying the same thing that we just saw. It will be scheduled to be deleted on 29th June 2022. Today it's 30th May. So we are good with that. Now let's go to Cloud Shell over here. Click over Activate Cloud Shell. Right now we could create multiple configuration to seamlessly move from one project to another or to switch the context between multiple projects to view the current configurations enter this command gcloud config configuration list and hit enter and it will show you the default configuration that we have this was created when the project was created for you so this is the name and this is by default active configuration rest of the values are blank and these values can also be set by setting the environment variables to create another set of configuration you would run this command gcloud config configuration create and then name of configuration which is project A hit enter and it will create a project A named configuration for you and activate that configuration for you. That means you are now in project A in the cloud shell. If you run the list command again now you will see two configuration over here. First was the default one that we had Another one was the project A and right now project A is activated. There is no project in it. There is no default zone or region with it. Right. But you could always set this variable. So this is how you move seamlessly between multiple projects and multiple configuration. You could either set your default zone, region, project and account. Uh, but make sure like to activate the configuration after it's been created. By default, it will activate it for you. But if you want to move back again to the previous configuration, you would still use to use the activate command, which is this one over here. Gcloud config configuration activate project A. All these commands on all those details, I'll put the link in the description section below. Don't worry about it. All right, time for a quick knowledge check. So the first question is, what are the steps to delete a project? How to stop incurring charges for all the resources in a project? Which among these is not unique and can be modified after the project creation? Is it project number, project ID 
or our project name and the last one steps to switch between multiple projects using gcloud cli all right so that's it for this video guys i hope you liked the video and you would have enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below the answer of these questions or if you have any difficulty understanding these i'll try to get back to you as soon as possible and i'll see you soon with the next video thank you for watching the video have a good day